Welcome to the College Sports Conversations presented by the NCAA. I'm Kayla Gagnon. As part of Pride Month in June, we are talking with student athletes in the LGBTQ plus community about their journeys and college athletics experience. This is a topic that is extremely close to my heart as a former swimmer at West Virginia University and a member of the LGBTQ plus community. A few years ago, I started to start my own podcast, Queer Mountaineers, that challenges the popular narrative of what it means to be queer and Appalachian, and it's now in its fourth season. Our guest today is former St. Anselm field hockey player, Julia Hand. She recently graduated from there with a degree in elementary education and has a very powerful story to share. Julia, thanks for joining us. Hi, Kayla. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing great. You know, it's great to be chatting and to kick this off. Um, I'm so excited to have you as my first guest. So excited. Yeah. Well, happy Pride Month. You too. Thanks. Uh, are you doing anything to celebrate this month? Um, I was planning on going to Boston Pride, but I recently heard that they made the events virtual, so I might go to New York Pride with my friends. Oh. How far away do you live from New York City? Kind of far. Kind of? Five, five-ish hours. Not, not so bad. That's, yeah, that's not bad. I grew up just a little bit outside of New York City. Uh, by a little bit, I mean like an hour and a half, but you know. That's so cool that they go to New York Pride. I've, that, it's, like, it's like one of the major Pride events in the world. So that's really exciting to be able to go there. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations on recently graduating. As I mentioned in the introduction, you just graduated from St. Anselm. Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, would you like to share a little bit about your college athletics experience? Absolutely. All right. So freshman year, we'll throw it all the way back to freshman Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> So I started in goal, so I'm a goalie, I guess, as well, (laughs) but I started in goal. We had a pretty good season. We lost in NCAAs, but it's all right, and then from there, sophomore year was pretty good, not quite as good as freshman year, but still played strong, and then I just left for the Army for a little while, like brief break and then junior year was our most my junior year was our most successful season the 2019 season that's definitely an interesting college athletic experience right there like some people maybe take a break you know and you joined the army which I think that is super cool which we'll get into a little bit but before that I just checked out your uh your story on team USA and you said that you were a soccer player until you you know until like you know later (laughs) yeah I was a competitive soccer player I played club soccer I did everything soccer until I got to high school so that was a weird transition but my mom actually is a she was a full scholarship athlete at Boston University she was a field hockey goalie and she's now in the hall of fame so it's pretty cool so she was definitely a big inspiration there yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I my mom was also a, college, a Division One college athlete as well, uh, swimmer. Uh, I'm from a family of swimmers myself, and I did try. A little, I it was like field hockey was one of the sports that I tried to get into, but good for you because that that's a that is a you know a tough sport. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has its challenges, but every sport does. We're here to talk about obviously uh, with LGBTQ plus athletes. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit of your journey to? you know, understanding and discovering your true self. Yeah, so this actually comes back to the army a little bit, but while I was away, so I left because I knew like there was some part of me that was missing and I didn't know what it was myself. So being away from everyone, away from technology, away from everything else, I could really focus in on who I was and who I wanted to be. And I think that that space and time gave me the opportunity to sort of find out what was missing and I mean of course it helps that there was a really pretty girl there but (laughs) it just helps a little but um yes so that definitely moved from there and then I continued on to like the second round of training so I wasn't like with her anymore like I wasn't like um close to her at least because I had to go to one training she had to go to another and so when we started dating, I had to, she hadn't come out to her parents and I obviously hadn't come out to my parents. So over FaceTime, while I was like on one of the days we got our phones, I was like, yeah, like, can I talk 
to you guys? My parents were like, oh God, like what happened? Like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, like I just, um, I wanted to tell you and I was so awkward. And it was like the most, like I was so afraid that just made it so awkward. And I was like, yeah, like I'm gay. Like I'm dating a girl. My mom was like, oh, like we figured. I was like, oh, all right. Well. It's always so funny when like you're when like a parent knows kind of like almost knows before you do yeah. like uh I, I mean like I also came out over a you know a call as well and trust me it was probably just about as awkward as yours <laughs> yeah I tried and my parents were like cool like we knew that for years I was like okay someone should have told me yeah I love, I love it when that happens it's like it's like you know the secret that everyone else knows except you mm-hmm. uh yeah, because like a lot, what not not a lot of people realize who aren't LGBTQ plus is that you gotta come out to yourself before you come out to others. Um, do you kind of have like an, you know, a, a you know, a eureka epiphany moment where things kind of clicked for you? Um, yes. So I was the so this other girl. She had a girlfriend at the time, and so we sort of just kept getting closer and closer and we were really, really good friends. And then I think there was just like one moment where I was like, we're definitely like more than friends. Like I have a crush on her. And I think that like that moment was just, it was just like one random day. Like we were in training, we were working hard and I was like, realized that it was so much more than I just wanted to be her friend. And I think from there, there was a lot for me to accept, but And not necessarily that I was upset with myself, just that it was like something else I had to do. So that was scary. But I think that overall, it definitely made me a way better person. Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like the Army was a really transformative experience for you in just about every way imaginable. (laughs) Pretty much. I came back and everyone was like, whoa. Like you were just so different. And I was like, that was kind of my goal. Like, this is why I left. Yeah. Well, you did mention, in, um, you know, you love to join the army to, you know, like kind of understand yourself better and things like that. Um, do you mind elaborating a little bit more on like, you know, kind of transitioning from, you know, athlete to member of the army and then back to athlete again? <laughs> So a little bit of a rocky transition, but I, my dad was in the National Guard. My grandfather actually was full force army. So I think that I always had this idea in the back of my mind that it was something I really wanted to do or at least try. And so one day, it was the middle of the summer, like after my freshman year of college. And I was like, I need something more. Like I was just striving for something that I didn't have. And so I actually called my coach in the middle of the summer and I was like, hey, coach, like, can I like meet with you sometime this week? And so I walked into before I told my parents, I walked into her office in the middle of the summer and she looked terrified. And I was like, so what if I join the army? And she was kind of like, what? Like, are you sure? Like, where is this coming from? And it's actually really funny we joke about it now but when she first heard that I wanted to join the army like when I asked her to meet she thought that I was either dropping out of school transferring or I got arrested and needed her help with something and she was like this was the best possible thing you could have done (laughs) oh my goodness that is so funny but it sounds like you two have a really close relationship yeah I have a really good relationship with my coach I think I've definitely built it over the years but she has made me a way better person. She coaches all of her athletes, not just on the field. She really wants us to come out of college and grow and be a better person. So I think that she has helped me on my journey immensely. But so I told her before I told my parents. (laughs) I was going to say that definitely says a lot (laughs) about your relationship right there. Yeah, I mean, considering that was like what your freshman, really after your freshman year when you wanted to join the army. Yeah. Yeah, well, you, I mean, with being a student athlete, I'm kind of curious did any of your student athlete experience, um, you know, help with military training and the military experience, not just physically, because I know that, you know. I think preseason, anyone knows preseason is the worst. It is 
so hard. <laughs> and so I think, oh, yeah. yeah, just that drive to like keep pushing and like knowing that your body can do so much more than you feel like it's capable of. I think that like mindset really helped me when I got to the army because yes, I was prepared physically, but in retrospect, I think it's a lot easier to prepare physically than it is to prepare mentally and emotionally. So I think definitely was hard. There's some days that it was just like, you just didn't want to do it anymore, but you had, you were surrounded by people in the same boat as you that were away from their families that had no contact to the outside world that were just there to do exactly what you were doing. So you could really lean on each other a lot. And that is a huge thing. And that definitely helped me. I'm sure. I mean, that's just kind of what happens with preseason training with, you know, athletics too. you, uh, especially, I mean, I remember as a freshman doing, I mean, I'm not saying that preseason is like exactly what, you know, army training is, but you know, I mean, for someone who had never been in the army, it felt like it to me at the yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, but like just at, by the end of the experience, whether it's like training, even training trip too, uh, you know, having that much tough, working, you know, working out constantly and, you know, the team is always closer after any tough experience. Exactly. So I think it's absolutely the same mindset. Like when you come out of preseason, even as a freshman, you know that you have all of these people that you can lean on. Like they got you through that run test or that swim test or whatever you're doing. Oh, we did running too. We did, we did running. I threw up the first time because of training the, the do it during a run so yeah oh, it was yeah. <laughs> classic preseason right there but yeah so you said that you met your girlfriend while in the military um was that like how was that environment with like were there other um you know lgbtq plus people like that you were you know working with every day yeah i mean i think there's so many more than like you realize like it's, it's like i had never like not looked for it but like paid any attention like I didn't care but I wasn't noticing so I think being there was the first time I noticed and I was like oh like she she definitely likes girls like that's interesting <laughs> and just like not that it matters to me it never did but like just paying attention for the first time I think is such like a weird switch in your mind almost you're like trying to find people that are like like you or like who you think you might be to see how they interact or anything else. But yeah. Yeah. I'll take it that with like a lot of other, you know, LGBTQ plus people around you. Um, was it kind of an, like an accepting environment um, from not just like your peers, but you know, from your, like your superior officers and things like that? We weren't date Like we did not start dating while we were in like basic training I figured I mean how do you have time to date with basic training right yeah, we definitely did not start dating before, <laughs> but um so I I'd sort of come out to myself then but I hadn't really come out to anyone else and so like nobody like I mean maybe they knew like the way I noticed they did but I think it, I didn't it wasn't until I got to like the next round of training and we started dating started long distance that was just so fun but started there, I think that was just. <sighs> How are some of the ways that you grew as a person because of your experience in the military? Um, just in the military, I think I, like I, you don't realize this until you actually have to do it, but like your mind gives up way before your body ever will. And I think like you can say that as much as you want, but really like, living through that experience definitely makes you realize who you are deep down and I think that well I actually hurt my back while like the last couple of days of basic training so that was oh, wow. yes so that definitely you know impacted the rest of my life in a good way or a bad way but it's a way <laughs> yeah definitely had an impact it just was. <laughs> yeah and then um, how does that experience of, you know, how, your, how does your military experience help you as you kind of move forward in your career, especially since you just graduated? Um, I think just 
having like the mindset or like the knowledge that like you can truly accomplish anything if you really, really want to. And sometimes it's going to take a lot of work and it's not going to be something that you can just easily just be like, yeah, like I can do that. Um, But just like sort of bringing that with me in the future is going to help me um, at least be a classroom teacher, hopefully deal with 10 year olds all day long. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think once you go through the military, you can handle 10 year olds, right? (laughs) You'd hope. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Uh, so kind of pivoting back towards your student athlete experience, because, um, you rejoined the team after your experience in the military, correct? Yeah. I figured it right. That was one of the things I talked to coach about. I was like, so if I leave, can I come back? And she was like, I might have to make some phone calls here, but probably we're going to try. Yeah. And what was that like? Kind of like being away from the team for you know for how sorry how long were you in the army again before you came back four and a half five-ish months I was gone from January to May so a lot could happen in that time period I figured yeah. uh, what was it kind of like being you know reintroduced to that environment after going through such a you know life-changing experience with going through military training um so I got back and then a like back from the military I mean and a week later my team was going to Germany to play like in a couple games and like Berlin Munich so I got back and the first thing I did was see my team I was so excited to see them I hadn't seen them in so long and we got on a plane to Germany so I think that that was kind of like a nice way to be like see everyone at the same time and like sort of just jump back in and I definitely had like a bit it was a bit of a transition to just be like okay I'm not doing military things now I'm gonna play field hockey I'm gonna jump back in and I have to earn my spot and I need to try even harder like because I earned my spot and now I had to earn it back I had to prove that just because I was away I missed spring season they were all working really hard during spring season I wasn't there So just sort of like proof to myself and coach and all my teammates that I was still just as capable to step on the field and like instill that confidence in them, in me. Uh, Yeah, I think that makes sense. (laughs) No, it makes sense. Um, But yeah, you you mentioned like that it was a bit of a a transitional experience. Um, Do you mind elaborating a little bit more on like some of the stuff that went into transitioning from being in military training to uh, field hockey training, for instance? Um, I think I was so worried that they were all going to find out that like I was gay, that I had to come out, that I was like hyper focused on like this big secret I was holding. And so I couldn't even like focus on the transition back to sports. It was more of like the transition of who I was as a person took all of my energy. But um, and the games in Germany, they weren't uh, like high stakes games. It was more just for fun and to train and everything else. So then we got back and we jumped right. Like after that, had the whole summer, trained really, really hard, jumped into preseason. And I think I just went in with the mindset that like I was at a level playing field. I could do this. I earned my spot. I wanted to be here really bad. But, um, and I think I was also worried that people would be angry at me because I left and now I was still going to get to play or anything else. So I really, really tried hard to prove that I deserved to be there, like to myself and to my team, because I wanted them to have so much confidence in me. So I think that was hard. Yeah, I can only imagine. Um, I mean, you mentioned that, you know, coming out to the team was, you know, a little scary. Like, you know, the thought of it was a little scary for you. Um, what was that like coming out to your teammates? Um, so kind of a funny story. So we are in, I think we're in the airport in Germany. We just get there and I wear like a ring. It's a clatter ring. It's an Irish thing. And so when the heart faces like you, that means that you're taken. And when it faces away, that means you're single. And so then one of my teammates actually noticed and she was like, hey, like you didn't used to wear your ring facing that way. And so that was immediately like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to come out right here in this airport. 
we haven't even been here for like five hours oh no like, <laughs> uh, yeah like I met someone in the army uh that was just uh and like panicked and that was all I said I like couldn't form any more words and I'm texting my girlfriend being like they all just found out what do I do how do I do this because she was still in training for like months after I like she was in training till August so it was like I had to do this all by myself and I was jumping right back into the real world (laughs) and so of course I did come out to them and it wasn't a big deal and they didn't care but I came out to the people I was closest with on the team first sort of as like a practice knowing that they wouldn't care but sort of like just to like get my footing and like see what I was going to say and we sort of had a couple drinks at the bar before we did that but (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's a good experience it's always awkward coming out isn't it like you know it's so funny when they show in tv shows where it's always like you know perfectly scripted and using metaphors and things like that it's like you're writing a college essay and then like in real life it's more like I think I'm gay and, you know kind of like at least that's how that's how I was with my teammate I was like my teammates I was like oh by the way I'm gay like you know that kind of thing <laughs> absolutely it was like yeah like I think that the, you this might be relevant information and you might want to know and uh uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that your experience was so positive with your with coming out with like your family and your teammates and your teammates all your family too you know yeah um yeah it was scary and it but it was a lot more scary for me, I think, than anyone else. I was so worried that they were only going to view me as my sexuality. Oh, like, that's the gay girl on the team. Oh, like, that's that. And, like, I think just, like, knowing that they don't change their view of you based on this one small aspect of who you are, that was scary. But it was quick to realize, because my coach, actually, she's also, she's a lesbian. So she has a wife. Her name's Ashley. She's the best. Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) So that also, I think, was why I built such a good relationship with her, because I was like, no, knew that that was such a safe environment to be who I wanted to be. That's amazing. Oh, my God. It's so cool to have, you know, to be able to like kind of see someone who has a similar experience to you. uh, Mm it's always so comforting to meet others, you know, it's, oh my God, people like us, you know, kind of, yeah. exactly. Um, well, it being, so coming back from the military, uh, I know I mentioned like asking you if like, your student athlete experience helped you with the military experience, but now asking you the reverse question, did your military experience kind of help with that student athlete experience again, especially on like the physical and mental side, especially after going to such a trial, like military training? I think it, more than anything else, it gave me the ability to just push past all of my limits and just know that the harder I train today, the better I would be tomorrow, the more saves I would make in that game, the and everything else. And I was trying to prove to everyone that I was supposed to be there and to myself that like, I think it was so much of like a confidence thing. Because when I left like freshman and sophomore year, I had confidence, but I was the I was an underclassman I was so nervous walking into every game I was going to mess up and especially as the goalie I think it's really easy to just blame every loss on yourself and so when I came back it was like I'm stepping on this field to have fun I'm going to do my best I'm going to try my hardest but I'm doing this for me at the end of the day not for everybody else yes it'd be great if they supported me but I'm going to try my best for me and if a goal goes in it's not the end of the world It's not my fault. It went through everyone else on the team before it even got to me. So I think that I was just able, like my mindset, I think was just so different, like knowing that I had the confidence to succeed. Well, you did share your story with being a student athlete and being in the military and coming out with sideline stories. Um, What was it like writing about your experience and sharing that to the world? Um, I wrote that story probably 10 different times, had a million people read it over, changed like one sentence, one comma, like it, like I spent so long making sure that it sounded like professional and it, but it was still true to me. It was so important that it was actually what happened, not this like version that I wanted everyone to see. Cause when I first wrote it, it was this like picture perfect, like coming out story like everything was like nice and I read it and I was like 
that's just not what happened. Like it was not that perfect and finding the imperfection there, but also knowing that's what made it my story. That's why I wanted to share it because it wasn't easy and it was really hard. And I could let other people know that like, no matter how hard it is, I still want to share that. I still want to help people if that can help people. Exactly. It's just so, it's, really important to be able to share our stories to see because like it's not just us trying to you know get attention to be like oh our lives are so perfect and all that stuff um you know it's showing to others who might not have accepted themselves just yet um you know athlete or not being able to see like okay that person is out they're visible and you know I can have a good life too, you know? Yeah. It's absolutely important to say. And thank you. And thank you for sharing that. Of course. (laughs) Yeah. So with uh, kind of pivoting back to your uh, student athlete experience, um, what do your teammates and teammates and coaches like mean to you um, looking back at your experience? Um, They are the, it's the most incredible group of women I have ever spent time being around. I have seen the best and the worst of probably every girl on the team and just knowing that you can go through it together and just be able to just help somebody push a little harder my coach actually has this really cool analogy that she gives to us like the beginning of most years or whenever she told us but that sometimes if you have a hundred percent this is this is your tank it's a hundred percent sometimes you show up to practice all you can give that day is 10%. That's all that you can do. You had a really hard day, something at home happened or something in the classroom happened, or you had an exam or you're really tired or you have a headache or whatever it is. You can only give 10%, but you have to give all of that 10% as much as you can give. You still have to give the full 10%. And then on the days when you feel 100%, seeing if you can push past and give 110% to help the person I can only give 10% and sort of just helping like pick each other up and balance each other and not getting angry at someone for messing up a drill or for no, like just not blaming other people for not being able to give because you have no idea what could be going on in their head. Absolutely. That's such a great way to approach things. I have to keep that in mind myself. That is such great advice. Yes, I keep that with me all the time. You just don't know. And maybe you can give a little bit more. Exactly, exactly. You know, military or student athlete, or in your case, both. It's just something that you learn with that experience. (laughs) Now that your student athlete career um, has come to a close, um, what are some of the things that you've taken away from your student athlete experience? Um... Wow, I so so. I know that's why I usually say these kind of big open-ended questions for the end (laughs) because so much I've taken away from that experience. I think it gave me the environment to learn who I was. I think it taught me that I can be a really good athlete if I really wanted to be. I think it taught me that it's okay to lean on other people, like especially my coach or teammates like if you have a bad day it's okay to lean on everyone else if you feel like you have this big secret and you share it with just one person it's a little bit lighter I think that just having that environment and those people around you have really just I will always have those friends I still talk to them I was texting them yesterday like those are just it's such an incredible group and I think that just any being on any team like walking away the transition has been really hard for me for sure but especially because we didn't really get everything we were supposed to get we Mm -hmm. you know we didn't get senior year but so I think I was unpacking my field hockey bag actually when I like moved out of my apartment and my water bottle was still full I I don't know. I just feel like that is such like proof that you just didn't know what you were losing when you were losing it. Like coach came into lift um, junior, like the spring junior year, she came into lift and she was like, 
you guys have to stop lifting, you're going home. And we were like, what? But it'll only be for two weeks. Okay, so we can handle two weeks off. Okay, it'll be for a month. Okay, you don't have a season. Okay, maybe you'll play in the spring. Okay, you're not gonna play in the spring. Like it was just like slowly stripping everything away. And like, I filled my water bottle for practice that I never got to go to. And that's like, it's just so hard to think back and think of all the things you could have done. What if you had this season? What if you got a little bit better? What if, cause we lost in the national championship. Like, what if we got one more opportunity? What if we could win? Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to know that that's just all gone now, but I think you can still carry with you like all of the good things and the life lessons that I learned and the people. Absolutely. I mean, if anything that this, these times have taught, at least for me, I'm pretty sure for you too, is resilience. Um, and also just appreciating everything, uh, no matter how small it is, uh, you know, like time with texting with teammates, meeting with them over FaceTime or any other kind of video chat. Um, you know, I'm grateful to have that experience even before the pandemic and even during the pandemic, uh, trying to get like, we really try to have some, we try to make the best of it, learn to make the best of a really tough situation. Yeah, you know, finding all of that. Um, but thank you for sharing that. That definitely was, you know, I could relate to every single word you said on that, on missing out on, you know, your, your final, your final victory lap, you can say, if you will. But moving forward, uh, congratulations again on graduating. Uh, you know, what's, what's kind of next for you? Um, so right now I took my job back at the nursing home that I've worked at for years. So I'm doing that for the summer, working on passing the rest of my teaching board so that I can be licensed to teach in New Hampshire, hopefully teaching fingers crossed, get a job um, <laughs> in the fall. And then in between, I'm actually going to Africa. I, oh, wow. I, I got an internship in a community center in Cape Town, and I'm going to be working with um, teaching my own curriculum to African orphans. So I'm really excited about that. I'll be gone for like a month. That's really exciting. Um, best of luck to you on that. That's Thank so you. awesome. Um, before we finish, I just wanted to ask, uh, do you have any advice for those who might be in similar situations to what you've been through? Um, I would say the best piece of advice that like I learned through my experience would just be that no matter how alone you feel, you aren't. You have someone, even if your parents don't accept you, your friends aren't as accepting as you want them to be. Um, there's a whole community of people that would be want you to know that it's okay to be yourself. And maybe you don't have anyone to tell, um, reach out, you can tell me. <laughs> like, I think just the first person you tell is the hardest. And after that, it's sort of like, you're just giving up a piece, like, like, okay, it's okay. It is so much lighter to just be yourself. And it's really, really hard. And I think it can be frustrating and scary, but you'll definitely feel better afterwards. Well, Julia, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story. We really appreciate your openness and your vulnerability during this chat that we had today. Of course. And thank you to our audience for tuning in throughout this month as we celebrate Pride Month. For more of me behind the mic, you can check out the Queer Mountaineers podcast on iTunes and Spotify. This has been College Sports Conversations presented by the NCAA. We look forward to talking with you again.